Oh, there, there's plenty I want to talk about. There was, we were having this discussion earlier about design patterns, but I kind of want to, to, to let things sort of um, uh, happen more organically. I imagine there's a few there's a few topics that I'm sure have come up before, um, most notably the the separation between your code in the back end versus the, the code you write that sort of hits Unity. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm just curious what, what – actually, I'm curious what people are doing at the moment for that. How are they decoupling their code from sort of – Am I, I'll put it another way. Am I the only one who writes a large portion of his code outside of Unity? Right. Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting. You know, like I, I basically writing a class library first, right, and then pulling that into Unity and using your classes. Um, it's funny that there's kind of a logistical problem there too when you do that. Like, yeah, you have to build out the DLL. And I actually, I'm sure you've done this too, but you know, using the I think it's like build steps or something. You can automate that process. Every time you build it, it'll drop it, the DLL into you know the folder that you need it to be dropped, like your Unity project. Yeah, yeah, I have I have that entirely set up so that when I post build after my test run, post it exports it. Yeah, it, it it does that. There's post steps, and I, I have one for a post build step for dropping the DLL into my Unity project. So it's continuously integrated from that perspective. And because I'm using Writer, and Writer's a lot better with refreshing with Unity. Uh, I don't get that whole big giant freeze that Unity used to do when Visual Studio would go through its refresh. So I could literally write code, make changes in it outside of Unity, inside of just plain um, Rider in a DLL, and then it'll refresh Unity. And even if I've got referenced classes and stuff in there, they'll all refresh automatically. So when I say I work outside of Unity, I don't. It, it, it's not like I'm working in a in a box elsewhere and then dragging DLLs in. You know, you can automate that entire pipeline. It's just it's a good reminder when I work outside of it that I don't need to reference Unity DLLs if I don't have to. So it's just, it keeps things isolated when I work on things that really don't actually require Unity. Now, do you do DLL, so like you create a class library and you put it straight into a Unity project, or do you, have you ever used the Unity class library, a Unity class library that like Writer has a template for? I don't know if you've seen that. No, I actually didn't even know that was a thing. That's interesting, I'll have to look into that. I, what I normally do is I will create a new solution. So say I have a project and it's called, you know, my project. What I would do is I create a my project solution, <clears throat> and then with my Unity project, I use the U prefix, so I use U dot my project. So mm-hmm. I have a Unity version and then a non-Unity version. And in that non-Unity version, I would have my project as the base class library. <clears throat> Excuse me. And out of my project dot Unity as the Unity integration for that project. So I end up with three different sections. I have mm. one portion that is the actual Unity project, one portion that's um, platform agnostic code for this project, and then I have a bit which is the Unity tie-ins, because you can reference the Unity DLL inside of a class library. So between right. all three, it sounds like I, it sounds like I'm making an awful lot of architecture, but it's not really, because <laughs> you, you set this thing up once, it's just, and I have it mostly down to templates and I can do things automatically, yeah. and I just have three folders to put code into. And it's just as if I had, this is Unity specific, this is not Unity specific, and then this is kind of global for the whole thing. So that's that's all it is. It's not really super um, high architecture. It's just purely giving myself buckets of organized code. And the benefit of that is when I come by later and I want to take a portion out of the project and move it to something else, use a different project, I can take a bit that has zero connection to Unity or even just to this project and I can reuse it elsewhere. So it, also the whole unit testing and stuff is easier as well. So Yeah, definitely unit testing is easier on a regular class library. Um, and, and what's also cool is now that Unity has the pa- their package manager is a little more mature, you can, you, you can export those as packages, give them, give them some light documentation, some information. I actually shared my screen here because uh, I was just going oh, to Unity show that. Oh, Unity Class Library, yeah. Yeah, just, and it references the Unity Engine DLL, so you can basically you know, create a Unity Class Library. Nice. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I, I did it. Um, I was work. I was messing around with this inventory that I was working on just for fun, trying to model the World of Warcraft inventory mm-hmm. system with the bags and all that. Um, and yeah, I did that. I made a class library. I made a, a Unity class library, and then I made the Unity project. And so yeah, it's a. I mean, if it's the first time you're ever doing that and you're not familiar with working with class libraries and stuff like that, it's. It feels like why am I doing all this? But in the long run, you know, it is beneficial. I see that um, someone asked, what are the benefits of a non-Unity versions? I'm imagining he's talking about, I guess, the code that is like platform agnostic. Yeah, I, I guess, I, I think I'd put a big caveat to everything I've said and say that if you're not familiar with working with class libraries and working externally, don't bother. It's one of those <laughs> things that it works for people who know what they're doing and how they've been doing it for a while. And you might find use in it 
later in your career. But <clears throat> it's it's just that I come from a background of writing my code for enterprise software, um, committing it, running unit tests on it, and then having some level of continuous integration. So for people who are not familiar with that term, it means every time you make changes and save your code and commit it to your source control, all your tests will rerun. So your code is consistently in a state of being verified if it works or not. And that means you can have a large chunk of your code that lives in this kind of tidy bubble that is easy to test because Unity by its nature is just very hard to test because the mono behavior sort of, it, it's, like a, it's like a weed that creeps into every aspect of your code even when you're not using it. So whenever you find yourself making a mono behavior, you don't really think about it, but if you press F12 on the declaration of the word mono behavior, you'll see how big that file is. And so if you, you can go down even further to component and see how big that is. And after a while, you start to realize, hang on a second, I've just written the word mono behavior in this empty script, but this script has like, I don't know, something in, somewhere in the realm of like 500 lines of code inherited down the chain to add support for features like physics and audio and <clears throat> component management and positional data. And it's like, am I using that when I write health dot amount plus equals five? Like, am I needing any of that stuff that I'm writing? And is, is that going to make my life easier or harder to test or work with? And in my opinion, a lot of that stuff is unnecessary and harder to work with. So if I can just write a plain C-sharp script in a plain C-sharp project and just talk about adding a number to an int, test that it works, I have a piece of code which works outside of Unity, works anywhere I'd ever want to use it, it's easy to test, and I can drop it into Unity and get all the Unity benefits and features I want. I just don't have to rely on them. Because if you yeah. do it inside of Unity and you try to take that script out, you'll get a bunch of errors. I need mono behavior. I need transforms. I need to get component calls. It's like, well, do you need those things? So the script may think it does, but if you can separate the two, you can clean your code a lot. So now you, you can get a lot of this benefit without doing the separate DLLs. The separate DLLs is just a way of me moving it back into a more comfortable workflow that I'm used to. But you can do this by just having a folder in your Unity project, which is make a rule to yourself. Anything that goes in here doesn't reference mono behavior. And if you do that, you can at least keep a chunk of your code kind of cleaner than the rest of it in terms of what it references. And then that that's kind of halfway there. So 